if you, if you teach, you have to live your teaching.、Mm. Throughout history, these women have formed the front line of feminism. Today, as conflicts rage around the world, sexual violence continues to take a terrible toll. Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 modern feminist icons. Do you feel now like a pioneer? Yeah, I do. I know that when I leave this、uh, place, I will have done something. For this list, we're looking at prominent figures in the feminist movement. There are no criteria limitations in terms of social position, profession, or background, but every entry must have lived and worked in the post-Enlightenment era. The cloak of Alexander cannot be too heavy for Rome and Egypt to carry together. Number ten, Maya Angelou. I'm doing my best to live what I teach. Author, poet, essayist, activist, actress, and dancer, Maya Angelou is widely considered one of the most influential people of the 20th century. Bitter men, bitter men, bitter men. Auctioning slaves is a real high art. Bring that young gal out here, Roy. She's good for a star. A prominent voice in the civil rights movement, she worked closely with Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr., the latter of which was assassinated on her 40th birthday. A figurehead for women of all races, though especially for the African American community, she forced the world to listen to the female voice. Her soul-stirring words have taught us how to reach across division and honor the beauty of our world. Awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom in 2011, she was well respected, well loved, well experienced, and well simply inspiring. I don't believe you actually spoke to Tupac Shakur. So I said, darling, I don't know six pack, four pack. I never heard of him. Number nine, Barbara Walters. Have you ever asked a question that you've later then regretted asking? Ah,、uh, yes, every time. The first woman to really make the newsroom her own, Barbara Walters took TV journalism into a new era in the '60s and '70s. If you were creating the perfect candidate, it. Probably would not be you. You're not insulting me. Well, I you, agree with you. You、Barbara. would be younger. You might be better looking. Now you're insulting me, Barbara. <laughs> Before Barbara, the newsroom was very much a male-dominated environment, and Walters herself was consistently patronized and undercut during her early career. However, she stood firm and eventually established herself as a leading news anchor, interviewer, and wage earner for ABC. Molly, why do you stick your tongue out all the time? Because I get embarrassed to take pictures, so I stick my tongue out because I don't know what else to do. My mom's the one that gets the most mad at me about the tongue. Barbara Walters' legacy largely centers on the various high-profile, first exclusive interviews that she landed, from politicians to pop stars and actors. She never shies away from the big story. More than being remembered. I hope that by younger women, I can help them aspire. Number eight, Hillary Clinton. If women have a chance to work and earn as full and equal partners in society, their families will flourish. First Lady of the United States from 1993 to 2001. Senator for New York from 2001 to 2009, Secretary of State in the Obama administration from 2009 to 2013, Hillary Clinton's political background is unprecedented. A female personality who has managed to eclipse even her ex-presidential husband in terms of modern-day power, popularity, and influence, she has eyes on becoming the USA's first-ever female president in 2016. If I were going to run against him, would I win? Yeah. <laughs> Regardless of whether or not she makes it to the White House, though, Hillary has broken new ground for women in U.S. politics and has inspired others to follow in her footsteps. It is really time for gun owners to form a different organization that will do more on gun safety, do more on gun responsibility, and stand up for the safety of our children and our communities. Number seven, Benazir Bhutto. Because Osama bin Laden is part of this entire militant movement, and I have been their enemies long before the West became their enemy. A leader in every sense, Benazir Bhutto lived her life at the forefront of Pakistani politics and international affairs. When the Pakistan People's Party took control at the beginning of December 1988, she became the first ever elected female prime minister in a Muslim country. Military rule is the cause. Of the anarchic situation in Pakistan, military rule is not the solution. She oversaw two non-consecutive terms before a period in exile, spent largely in Dubai. 
Never wavering from what she believed in, she became both a master of political rhetoric and a feminist icon. Her 2007 assassination shortly after returning to Pakistan was both tragic and brutal. Bhutto was a woman of the people. I have a choice to keep silent and to allow the extremists to do what they are doing, or I have a choice to stand up and say this is wrong and I'm going to try and save my country. Number six, Billie Jean King. The feminist thing, uh, how important is that, Billie? The women's movement is important to me. In the world of sport, few can claim half the impact that Billie Jean King had on tennis. When she first took up a racket in the mid-50s, the sport had a country club image and was sometimes branded as chauvinistic. Great way to win a championship! But Billie Jean was a gifted player who won enough tournaments to get noticed and to get things changed. You're the first generation of men of the women's movement. Whether you like it or not. <laughs> her unceasing campaign for equal prize money is especially memorable, as is her performance in the Battle of the Sexes spectacle against Bobby Riggs. I love pressure, you can try to psych me all you want. A leading LGBT activist as well, she's a champion both on and off court. I told the truth at this press conference, of course you could have heard a pin drop, because I said, yes, I did have an affair with Marilyn Barnett, and I went, <gasps> Number five, Virginia Woolf. She didn't go to school and she didn't go to university. She was burningly resentful of the fact that she was self-taught and that she didn't have an education like her brothers. A hugely influential and forward-thinking writer, Virginia Woolf made her literary mark between the wars with the releases of Mrs. Dalloway, To the Lighthouse, Orlando, and The Waves between the years of 1925 and 1931. Her reputation as a feminist largely stems from another work, though, the lecture-inspired essay, A Room of One's Own. She was very good at portraying the instability of the mind and the way it flits this way and that and catches on some things and jumps over others. Published in 1929, it targeted the intellectual woman, with Wolf highlighting the privileges afforded to male writers. A rallying call for creative women everywhere, it encouraged others to seek a room, wealth, an education, and a general existence over which they had total control. Keep a diary, she said. Don't let a day pass without recording it, whether anything interesting has happened or not. Something interesting happens every day, she said. Number four, Susan B. Anthony. There's Susan B. Anthony! Yeah! And Julia Howe! Lucretia! Lucretia Ma! And I! They showed us how they carried signs and marched in lines until at long last the law was passed. Born in 1820, Susan B. Anthony lived in an earlier era than anyone else on today's countdown. In terms of the sheer politics of women's rights, she paved the way for modern feminists. Her attempts to vote in the 1872 presidential election and the criminal trial that followed got Anthony noticed. The trial was rigged, her vote didn't count, but she got great publicity value out of it. Meanwhile, her alliance with Elizabeth Cady Stanton helped further her campaign for equality. The original American suffragist, Anthony never stopped fighting for women's voting rights. Sadly, she died 14 years before that right was realized, but the 19th Amendment is largely the result of this woman's exceptional work. And now we cool down oh, wow. on the lever, cast our ballot, oh, wow. and we endeavor to improve our country, state, county, town, and school. Oh, yeah. Number three, Malala Yousafzai. They cannot stop me. I will get my education if it is in home, school, or any place. The youngest ever recipient of the Nobel Peace Prize and a continual campaigner for the education rights in Pakistan and worldwide, Malala Yousafzai is probably the most prominent feminist of the 21st century. I'm humbled that the Nobel Committee has selected me for this precious award. In October 2012, aged 15 years old, Malala was near fatally shot by the Taliban on her way home from an exam. My fear and my hopelessness died on that day, and I became stronger than before. And now I strongly believe that nothing can stop me in this mission, in this campaign uh, of uh, education to say that girls deserve the right to go to school. The assassination attempt was a reaction to her growing online influence as an activist for equality. Since her recovery, though, Malala's public appearances have received huge attention, and her opinions are widely admired. Listening to her, it's quite incredible to think she was born in 1997. I think death didn't want to kill me, and God was with me, and the people prayed for me. 
Number two, Emmeline Pankhurst. Never underestimate the power we women have to define our own destiny. Founder of the Women's Social and Political Union in the UK, Emmeline Pankhurst led a more militant campaign than other suffrage movements in the country. Amid hunger strikes, window smashing, and vandalism, she and her followers became known as the Suffragettes, a group galvanized by the model Deeds Not Words. Her speeches galvanized hundreds of thousands of women. It gave them a sense that they had a right to vote. Pankhurst's especially forceful methods, combined with their influence on the home front in World War I, ensured that limited voting rights were granted to women in 1918. A fundamental first step towards voting equality in Great Britain, Pankhurst unfortunately died two weeks before universal suffrage was granted in 1928. We do not want to be lawbreakers. We want to be lawmakers. Before we unveil our top pick, here are some honorable mentions. At that point then, she could carry out her plans and her main goal was to help the poor. No country in the world can yet say that they have achieved gender equality. But there is no one who's genuinely a feminist who doesn't support reproductive rights for women. Number one, Gloria Steinem. If you are not a feminist, male or female, you are looking at the world with one eye open. Our winner has been a women's rights campaigner since the 1960s and has consistently brought ongoing social issues into living rooms, onto coffee tables, and into conversations. The predominant reaction to the women's movement was ridicule. It took us a long time to be taken seriously enough to be opposed. Gloria Steinem launched her career with the 1963 expose on sexism in Playboy before getting involved with New York Magazine and then co-founding the feminist publication Ms. Magazine. By tirelessly working towards women's liberation, she's now synonymous with the modern day movement. An example for all young women and an inspiration for everyone who values personal freedom and fairness, Ms. Mojo salutes you, Gloria Steinem. You're with young women all the time, you're still talking to them. Yes, what I advice am. do you give to them? Here's my advice. Do not listen to me. <laughs> really. Do not. No. no. I, want, I want to support their listening to themselves. Do you agree with our list? Which feminist did we forget? For more pioneering top tens published daily, be sure to subscribe to Ms. Mojo. Put me up, baby, in a big wheelchair. Roll me, baby, roll.